Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwant and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the pleasure of meeting with Jeffrey Gittemann. He is going to share with us how he creates best-selling books. The most important part of any kind of publishing deal is will the publisher be behind you? If they're not, you're not going to sell many books. So, and I'll give you the best example of that. How many books are they going to publish on the first printing? Because if they only publish 7,500 books, you're not going anyplace. That assumes you're going to sell out all the books to get on the New York Times bestseller list, maybe. You need about 10,000 books to get on the Times bestseller list, but 2,000 will get you on, on Wall Street Journal. No, oh, really? I want to know what the distribution is. So I know Wiley will print 50,000 books on the first go-round because they're going to put them in the airports, they're going to put them in the Barnes & Noble, it'll be, a, it'll be a featured book, and I'll get on at least the Wall Street Journal, at least USA Today, at least, you know, and that will give the book another push. Most writers or authors are happy just to get a publisher to do it without pushing them as to how they're going to back it. And they give all kinds of excuses about... Uh, well, they have a marketing department and I'm working with them. Dude, are you in the airport or not? Are you a face out piece at Barnes and Noble or not? Is Amazon going to do a snip for you of 200,000 names or not? Are they going to do it the same day you launch the book or not? Do you have 100,000 people or 200,000 people that you send the piece out to or not? That's what I want to know. Yeah, so I have talked to many authors, and uh, you know they spend two or three years writing the book, yeah. and they spend only and one minutes. day promoting it. Right. Well, I think it's important to have a realistic approach to this, and the and the publisher these days, the publisher wants to know how many books the author is going to sell. They want them to pre-buy a thousand books at ten bucks a book if it's a twenty-dollar book. Right. So that's $10,000 if they've given the author a, a, a $25,000 advance, they've already earned back a third of the money. Well, there's one more secret that they have overlooked, which is you really have to have something good to say. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Number one, you have to be a good writer, and number two, you have to have content. Right. Let me ask you a question uh, in terms of writing. When you write, you make your thoughts fly in formation, so to speak. Uh, those are not random thoughts, but uh, when, when you write, um, you, you almost think a paragraph ahead, like a chess player is going to think about four or five moves. You know, you're, you're absolutely right. I do think like a chess player. I think I, I've been blessed with the ability to think in terms of list. So I can think of 10 things or 10.5 things in my case that you have to do in order to make a better sales presentation or to do a better follow-up or to accept the change that's coming down the pike or uh, respond to a price objection, whatever it is. There may only be 4.5 things or 7.5 things, but whatever it is, it's going to be a list and then a point five. And somehow, or the, and sometimes I'll, I'll do it as fast as I possibly can and then revise the list because I'm thinking so quickly. Okay, well, um, I better share one more secret. It's Dragon Dictate for Mac version 4. And I put this on, and I, I teach the program how to recognize my voice, my accent, and it immediately pops something up. It says Northeastern. And then I start the program. I've, you know, I've learned how to do it. They make you read about 25 or 30 sentences. The 21.5 Unbreakable Laws of Song was completely done Dragon. I can do 5,000 words in two hours, where I couldn't do a thousand words in three hours. What you're talking about is a very important subject that a lot of people don't think about, which is to synchronize the speed of your thoughts mm -hmm. with the speed of externalizing and recording it. But now that you see it, you get the visual feedback and you can reorganize your thoughts as you're doing it. Unbelievable. There's something else, which is when you do not speak, the brain is sort of wired to produce about uh, 45 to 50 ideas per minute. Wow. But they're all unorganized because 
when yeah. you when you think by yourself, uh, the brain is omnidirectional. It goes all over the place. When you start speaking, then yeah. it becomes linear. It becomes directional. It becomes more oh, cool. organized. When you go in a different mode of thinking, then all of a sudden they flow out of you, and that's how you create your best self. If I have a thought, I'm going to clarify the thought immediately by just using my own conversation. I'm a conversational writer. How is that different when you're on stage, when you speak? Well, I've given, I, first of all, I'm a slide-driven speaker. So I, in a one-hour speech, I'll use 225 slides. And I know that I can complete that slide set in about an hour. I don't need to know where I am, per se. The slide keeps me on track. It, I just incorporate my personal experiences and do what is known as creating a transferable concept. I say something, and I want the audience to say to themselves, I understand it, or I get it, I agree with this, I think I can do this, I'm willing to try this. Now there's a lesson here, let me give you the lesson. The obvious is still waiting to be invented, your job is to be thinking about it. I get it, I agree with it, I think I can do it, I'm willing to try it.